Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Gat Talks. Today I would be talking about uh, and reviewing the F1 smartwatch. Now, uh, this watch is not, it's, it has already been unboxed, so, but I have yet to really use it. So let's walk through this together, I think this would be a very good time to. Um, the F1 smartwatch is an unbranded generic smartwatch. Uh, but it still looks really cool. It's one of those watches that uh, came from China and um, with, you know, an Android system along with uh, a pretty sporty look. So uh, if you have done some research on smartwatches, you can see that this looks very close to something like the KW88 or something of uh, the Kingwear uh, smartwatches in this caliber. Uh, now let's walk through this watch together, and since I have not really used this watch before, I think it would be a very interesting uh, video to make, and you know, just walk through this together uh, without any clues. So let's uh, let's do this. Um, now this would be the default um, default home phase that comes with the watch. Let's see if we can actually, you know, browse through a few other faces like I do with uh, the Kingwear watches. So let's see, uh, if you will long press the home screen, it does not look like anything comes up. Oh, it actually does. So long press the home screen. Long press and hold. I like this one too. Long press. It does not look like it's the right command, which is not similar to uh, the Kingwear watches. So what it looks like is you want to just long press and hold and you want to wait for different watch faces to come up. Is that true? No, it's not. I think it actually switches on its own. It does not have as many uh, watch faces to choose from like the King W, the Kingwear KW88, which is a bigger watch. And it looks like it has a better interface as well. This one, if you go through the menu, you would have some of your fitness features. It looks like, you know, you could still open up a GPS service. Which I won't be surprised because uh, this is a 3G smartwatch. So you would have your walking mode and you would have, uh, you know, the option to track your calories. Your distance, uh, your time, of course, your pace, heart rate. Right? So that's the walking feature. Finish sport. Okay. The interface of this watch is definitely a little bit stiff. I can't really browse as flexibly as I can on uh, other smartwatches that I've seen. It does not look like you can go up or down, it's only a uh, left and right. Now let's go back to the home screen. Now you have your other modes of, uh, of fitness. Cycling. Which also looks almost exactly the same with uh, the walking mode, except for, uh, you know, this one notes that you're in the cycling mode. Still tracks about the same stuff. Heart rate, average pace, uh, change of pace, your distance traveled, and your calories. Okay. Now, it looks like when you want to go back to the main menu, you really have to go uh, just press the home screen here. Which is this button right here, it's the, it's the only button. You have your other modes. It looks like this watch will only be capable of uh, sports settings. So it does not have, uh, you know, a lot of the other features that Android watches do have. Uh, it does, does not seem like it has messaging or notifications or reminders. Um, so it's kind of limited. But I still do like um, just the, the face of this watch. I mean, it looks really cool. It's very sporty. 
This watch does not use a pin charger, a magnetic charger, which is kind of a, which is one of the downsides to this watch. You really have to just, you know, break through this uh, USB port every time you want to charge. So it's a little bit of a hassle. So if you don't mind that, you know, that's that shouldn't be a bother to you, but I still do like the magnetic charger a lot more. It's just a lot more convenient. You can just snap it on and start charging. Now let's put this watch on. And this is how it looks once it's put on. You know, I do like the band. Um, it's pretty standard silicone band that comes with a lot of these Chinese watches. And the case looks like it's made out of uh, aluminum alloy. So it's, it, you know, it does not feel like it's cheap. I think overall the watch looks pretty good. Some of the functions are a little bit limited comparing to other watches that I have, um, I have reviewed. But, you know, I think this watch is actually a little cheaper than, um, some of the other watches that I have reviewed, which is, uh, comparing to the KW88 or the DM98. I think this watch runs about, uh, 60 to 70 dollars on Amazon or eBay. So if you do enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up, uh, share, or even comment on this video. If you do want to proceed and purchase this watch, you can buy it from one of my links below from Amazon or eBay. I am a affiliate of both of these uh, websites. So if you do purchase this watch through my links below, I will earn a commission at no extra cost to you. And this wraps up my video. If, uh, if you have any comments, please leave me a feedback. Otherwise, I'll see y'all at the next video. Thank you.